sage grouse numbers have declined across the West, and that has researchers investigating potential culprits. Tail feathers were plucked. Every primary broken. This is intestines that were pulled out. Biologist Brian Bedrosian confirms that something killed this grouse. He finds blood on the feathers, indicating a struggle. Following the trail of feathers, he tries to unravel what happened. So whatever killed her, killed her on the nest, dragged her off, finished her where we just started. Bedrosian works for a nonprofit wildlife research team called Craighead Beringia South, based in Wyoming. This team has a long history of studying not sage grouse, but ravens. With North America's largest grouse species in trouble, ravens have come under scrutiny because they prey on sage grouse. Ravens are extremely visible, and so that could be one of the reasons why people start to look at them as one of the first culprits. And while ravens do consume the eggs and chicks of sage grouse, they're not alone. Other predators include coyotes, foxes, eagles, owls, and even human hunters. It's always easy to point your finger at, at predators uh, when a, a population of prey species is declining. So we wanted to put some hard science um, behind those theories to see if populations were being, uh, in fact, limited by ravens. Nearby Grand Teton National Park offers an ideal study site, one of the world's highest concentrations of nesting ravens. If ravens were seriously impacting the sage grouse, then we should be able to detect it here easier than in other areas. At this kill site, all indicators point to a predator of the four-legged kind. Bedrosian collects hair from the shrubs surrounding the nest, and he'll send it to a lab for DNA analysis to identify the real culprit. And there are other clues. Crushed eggs indicate this predator had teeth. But while predators kill the ground-nesting grouse, they're only part of the equation. And in the case of the sage grouse, I, I think most people understand that it's la loss of habitat that's you know, causing most of the, the problem. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service estimates that today there are roughly 160 million acres of sagebrush habitat. That's about half the size of the grouse's historic range. Sage grouse are called a sagebrush obligate because they can't survive in any other kind of habitat. Sage is the sage grouse's primary source of food. They, they eat the leaves of the sage brush. It provides shelter. It really provides all the things for their home that they need. Even with the population estimated at anywhere from 100,000 to 500,000 individuals across the West, the sage grouse is under consideration for listing as a threatened species. The Fish and Wildlife Service says the primary threat to sage grouse is potential loss of habitat due to invasive weeds, oil and gas drilling, roads, power lines, and other human development. But that's not to say predators don't play a role. You know, ravens and sage grouse evolved together for tens of thousands of years, and uh, they do uh, represent a, you know, a threat to nesting birds, but in the wild, if uh, other things equal, they're, they're not a threat to the sage grouse. In this national park, where human development is restricted, Ravens do not appear to be the limiting factor. That's despite the high density of nesting ravens and a relatively small population of grouse. For Assignment Earth, I'm Gary Stryker.